Europe and Russia are planning to send an unmanned lander to the moon within the next five years. Why? Because they want to establish whether or not they are going to construct a permanently manned lunar base there. Now, the European Space Agency, along with the Russian equivalent, which is called Roscosmos, want to send humans to the moon for the first time since NASA canceled its Apollo program over 40 years ago. Now, since then, NASA has canceled three other moon missions because A, they're super expensive, and B, there simply wasn't that much interest in going back to the moon. Been there, done that sort of thing for the Americans at least. Now, it seems like we might actually be losing in the race, this new race, because there's new interest firing up in the moon because we're finding all sorts of things that we didn't know before, particularly in the South Pole on the other far side of the moon. So most people call it the dark side of the moon. I don't know if it's dark to us because we don't see it. I don't think it's actually dark. but. That unmanned mission, it's called Luna 27. Like I said, it's aiming for the South Pole. Why? Because of the extreme cold there, Joe. We know that water and ice could be there and other chemistry could arise that could actually give us fuel for future Mars missions, which I think is freaking awesome, and also uh, other chemicals that can help sustain a permanent settlement on the moon. I know we talk a lot about Mars, right, when we're talking about these permanent settlements, but I think this can happen much sooner and it's much more feasible, and I think it's a good I don't want to say, but like it's good practice for the for, so for humans. So we're going to have like a gonna... gas station on the moon. Where we Basically, can... <laughs> gas station, right? Right. Where the rockets can can go, well, not refuel, just that. then go on to Mars. Not just that, but also you know, uh, these permanent settlements might allow things like mining to take place. I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing, but I know the Chinese have come out and said that they really are interested in mining to extract this this chemical called helium three, which which apparently is worth a lot of money. But I'm but sure China it's a is very interested time. Time. Yeah. in uh, in extracting more minerals and things and harvesting things from the moon. Yeah, this dark side of the moon is very uncharted territory. It, it's tidal locked, so it, it, that's why it's so cold over there. It's away from the sun, obviously, all of the time. Um, while I think it's very cool, and I think that there's a lot of a lot of things that can be done. I just can't help but worry about where this leads. You know, you've got Russia going up there, China going up there. Who controls the moon? How are we going to put some laws in place to stop us? We've already destroyed half of this planet. How are we going to stop us sort of uh, putting things on the moon, dumping things on the moon? I just wonder where this all leads in the future. Right, and I think that is the future. I mean, if we're talking about mining and, and, and things of that sort, I think, yeah, I mean, You'd, you'd expect there to be some sort of laws put in place, some international, universally recognized laws that make sure that we aren't as wasteful as we here, are here on Earth as opposed to on the moon. So hopefully that would be the case, but, but it's hard to tell. Anyways, this won't happen for the next five years. And basically it's going to start out just unmanned missions, right? We're talking probes, maybe the robots similar to what we sent to Mars. Later on, they figure we'll be able to have these permanent settlements on the South Pole of the moon. Yes, like I said, like gas stations at first, right? That's just one of the uses. I mean, yeah, great. We got gas stations, that's gonna help us with Mars for sure. I think that's gonna cut, you know, something ridiculous, like 60 something percent of the gas that we would use just from Earth. We can do it from the moon and it would be much, much cheaper if we timed it right as far as the orbit goes. But yeah, there's also no radio frequency on that side of the moon. So it actually seems to be that it's an, a very interesting spot with very little interference and a really good spot uh, from which to detect what's going on in outer space, aliens. Right. But you know, you no matter how skeptical you are about this, Joe, I mean, I think this is, you know, the next step for humans. We have to do these kinds of things. And I think it's cool to see Europe as well as Russia come together, right? And, and, and their interest in space exploration kind of transcending politics and all the feuds that are going on here on Earth, we're kind of coming together and doing it in space. Because I think if we're gonna be successful in things like this, we need to have some sort of international cooperation. And it's cool to see these, these two come together. And uh, like I said, NASA seems to be behind now because we completely lost interest in the moon. And now there's all this evidence that's showing a lot of potential for the moon, not only for human settlements, but extraction of minerals. Because we're going to put the American flag on Mars. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I, I'm sure a lot of uh, Americans are saying, well, hey, you know, the moon's ours, they can't have it, right? <laughs> so, anyways, we want to know what you guys have to say about Russia, as well as the European Space Agency coming together and actually implementing this plan to have, within the next five years, a settlement on the moon. Do you think that's realistic? Do you think that can actually happen? Because to me, it sounds extremely soon, although I hope it is true. Let us know in the comments below, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the Lip TV for more.